Good morning everybody. I uh, wanted to do a quick video on how to do some deep water um, hydroponics and uh, using some totes. The, there's a method that you can use these totes or any other kind of tote <clears throat> and uh, grow leafy greens in there like lettuce, um, cabbages, uh, any kind of herbs like basil, lemongrass, all those kind of things uh, into these uh, containers uh, using some uh, very inexpensive materials. Uh, that tote is a 27 gallon tote that I purchased at Lowe's for $14. And then uh, I went to uh, Walmart and got these uh, solo cups which are 5 ounce solo cups. And then all you do is make holes in them with a soldering iron and it goes very very quick as it melts them pretty quickly and put them in here uh, in the holes that you make on the lid. Now these solo cups are two and a half inches across the, the top from one end of the lip to the other one. So what I did is I went to Lowe's and got me a two and three eighths inch um, hole saw and then I created 12 holes in there and they're spread out about 6 inches apart of most of center to center so it's a pretty good uh, methodology of using that, it's, like I said it's a 27 gallon tote if I look at the other system that I have which is for big bushy plants uh, the spacing is of course a lot larger now there's 24 pots in those there and those 24 pots require uh, that drum to be almost full. That's a 58 gallon drum. So I got probably about, I don't know, 54, 55 gallons in it. Each pot is two gallons. So if you do the math, it's uh, two times 24 is 48 gallons. And then you want some reserve. So that's the reason why they supply that 58 gallon drum. So let's <clears throat> do a quick math and let's say it's 55 gallons for 24 pots. When you look at the density here on the leafy greens, that toad gives me 12 holes in 27 gallons. So the density here on a per gallon basis is identical to this other system here. This one requires 55 gallons for 24, 27 for 12, so that's, that's identical. It's half the number of uh, plants for half of the gallons uh, that you use. So it's a very uh, good system and all you do is uh, really use any kind of tote that you like and I have three here that I'm going to test. So we're going to do a, uh, a very easy test with those and see how it goes and what I'm going to do here is use a uh, an air pump and then you put the water about a half an inch to an inch from the bottom of the net cups. You can see them there. And then this pump here I purchased from Walmart for $11 and it has two outlets. So that's enough for two of these totes. If I come over here and I unlock this one, you can see how we're oxygenating the water there. And so when you transplant the seedlings in here, the uh, seedlings are going to go into these uh, things that are called uh, uh, plugs. They're uh, from a material called rock wool, and they'll be in that water, surrounded by, surrounded by hydroton, which are expanded clay pebbles, which you can see here. And so that'll give them something to hold on to. And as they grow, they will develop roots going down into the water and the air pump provides oxygenation into the water. And also when the bubbles burst, it'll have suspended water droplets in the air, which will continue to uh, provide nutrients to the plants. As they suck water down, the level will go down and it'll create an air space. And so the plants will develop two kinds of roots. One is long roots to reach down to the water and drink. The other one is going to be the other roots that they'll uh, create are air breathing roots so you'll have the oxygenation for added uh, protection in there and you'll be able to uh, 
put some pretty large leafy greens in here if you want to. Uh, as you can see, the spacing is quite a bit apart. I also have this other toad, which is smaller, and this would be perfect for like lettuce. Uh, and I put enough holes in there to kind of get us through. Now this one here, because it's shallower, I use a two and an eighth inch uh, hole saw. And as you can see the holes, uh, or the, the pots don't fit all the way down. However, if you look at it from the side, you'll see that the pots actually reach down to just about the bottom of this line here. And so all you have to do is uh, put the water, use this line as a reference, and put the water just a little bit above it. And then you can see the, uh, the air bubbler inside there that will be connected when everything's ready to go. So the next thing I have to do is, making, uh, is make some more pots for this particular tray here. And I'll show you how easy that is to do. So as I was saying earlier, uh, this is the hole saw that I used to make the holes for the net cups here. And this is a two and an eighth inch hole saw. And this is the one that doesn't allow the uh, cups to go all the way down. So this, uh, let me show you how that works. So this hole saw here, fits into here like that. So you can see the water level, or I'm sorry, you can see how deep into the hole that's gonna go. It's gonna go right to about here. And so for the shallow tray, this works out really well. <coughs> for the deeper tray, where you want these cups to go all the way in, this fits right to the lip, right below the lip. So you have plenty to grab on so when you create the hole with a, with this uh, two and three eighths inch hole saw, <clears throat> the net pots fit all the way down into it and hang from the lip just perfectly. As a matter of fact, just it's about sixteenth of an inch below the lip, so it has plenty of meat uh, to grab onto it. Now these are solo cups that I got from Walmart. They're five inch uh, cups. And as I said, they're two and a half inches in diameter. There's 80 in this bag, <clears throat> and they only cost $2.88. So that's quite a great value. And they're very easy to do. So what you want to do is you want to get a soldering iron like this and plug it in, let it get hot, and then just start making your holes in here. And what I do is I just simply push it in You'll notice that the bottom of these net cups, or this bottom of these five ounce cups, is uh, of a thicker material than the tops. And it doesn't have to be perfect. I usually do about nine or ten around the periphery, and about four towards the center, like that. And then all you have to do is, starting at this line here, just kind of stick your Sort of an iron in there, and you can see how fast that goes. And then just turn it a little bit, and keep doing that. They don't have to be perfect. They just you just have to have some holes in there. Very easy to do, fairly quick. I did order some three-inch pots, net pots, that I'm waiting for them to come in. They probably won't come in for another week or so. And I have another one of those 27-gallon totes, totes that I showed you, which are the black bottom with the uh, uh, yellow lid on them. And those are gonna have the, uh, the three inch net pots, which means I'll have to get a uh, three inch hole saw. And I was looking at the specification for those and they're 3.1 inches at the lip. So using a three inch hole saw is gonna give me one tenth of an inch less uh, or smaller hole than the lip is so it should be perfect uh, to fit in there and uh, hang right at the right level for what I need. Then all you have to do is fill up the uh, tray with enough uh, water and nutrient to fit or to fill uh, up to about here or so, about half an inch to an inch from the bottom. So that's as easy as it gets, pretty easy to do. Uh, 
let me show you a couple other things. We'll pause the video and show you what I'm talking about next. But that's uh, that's the end result there. And uh, for two dollars and eighty-eight cents for eighty of them, that's a pretty good deal. Now this is the tray that I'm working on right now, and this is this is the pot that we just made. So you simply just push it in a hole there, and it goes down that deep. Now, if you notice this. Uh, tray, the shallow tray, is clear in the bottom and you don't want to use that because light will get in there and uh, it will um, create algae problems in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this uh, contractor bag, a 42 gallon contractor bag which is three mils and if you use the whole bag then it's doubled so that's a six mil. And what you want to do is you want to put the bag in there, fill it up with water, let the water take all the wrinkles out and, and press uh, the bag against all the sides and then you put the lid on it and then you trim with scissors all around it, uh, leaving a, uh, you know, enough material outside so you can work with it easily. And that keeps uh, the problem, the algae problem at bay. So we're gonna see how that goes because uh, I like the idea of having a shallow tray simply because there's less nutrient that we'll have to deal with. That seems like probably might be the best bet uh, if I can find one longer than that, uh, but at that depth because um, that's a 12 gallon tote there. And uh, if I can just get it longer, I think that's the right depth and you should only have to add water and nutrient once a month and lettuce usually takes five weeks from the time that you plant it to harvesting so that should be uh, just about perfect this year we may have to refill it more often than that and so we're going to take an approach and see kind of you know how that works out and then how this works out we may use this one for plants that absorb a lot more water like bok choy for example uh, and chard and those kind of things that uh, have some very thick and very long stems in it and therefore they're going to be uh, drinking water much more aggressively than uh, cabbage for example or, or lettuce which will drink uh, water a lot slower because they don't have the stems uh, to throw the water up so quickly and so that's, that's essentially it it's a pretty simple system to set up uh, I'm going to do a video next on how to get the seedling started and what we use for that and uh, hopefully in a couple, two, three weeks the seedlings will be uh, big enough that we can transplant them to here, start our nutrients, uh, mix the solution, put the air uh, worms in it and uh, or the air stones in it and uh, let it go to town and this is right now is for a test but I'm going to build uh, a rail system using cinder blocks and, and uh, some wood uh, members in there to create multiple levels like this here I don't want to put that on the ground so I'm probably gonna lay a couple of long 2 by 4s down and lay these totes on the 2 by 4 so they're off the concrete and that way the concrete doesn't draw the heat away from the from the water uh, and get it too cold. Now, water temperature is pretty important as, water, as well as the air temperature but water temperature is more important for the plants and that way that'll give me one level down there that I can grow and then another level on top that I can put another set of trays. So I should have two levels of plants going all the way across here. So that's the plan for right now and that's how you make a deep water culture tote. Uh, it's a pretty simple thing to do. Uh, also for the air stone, what I did here, let me move this out of the way, is once you put the net cups in it, you go ahead and uh, drill a small uh, quarter inch size hole in here and uh, stick your airline through it and it fits just about perfect in here uh, so it doesn't come out easily and then you put a check valve which comes with the pump and, and usually comes with the airlines also uh, or with the air stones excuse me so that if the power goes out it doesn't uh, the water doesn't siphon out of the trays Pretty simple system, uh, should be fairly effective. I watch many YouTube videos on different channels. Uh, MPH Gardener is one of those, and uh, I think we're gonna try that out. So thanks for watching everybody, God bless you all, take care.